Hey everyone, it's T. Have you ever looked at a movie's cast and just thought like, this kind of looks like the pale aesthetic tag on Tumblr? And like that kind of turns you off, but like the story, the characters, the visuals. So today I thought I'd do some fall looks inspired by movies I rarely see myself in, specifically from these directors. <laughs> Number one. Wes Anderson. Now, full disclosure, I've never actually seen a Wes Anderson movie. I know, I'm ashamed to my college degree. However, I've seen a lot of GIFs on Tumblr, so I get the gist. So outfit number one. I based an outfit around this shirt that I thrifted. Print just gives me like, I can't really explain it. I think I smashed together the aesthetics of the Life Aquatic and the Royal Tenenbaum somehow. I know it's a lot of color. When I feel like his costumes sometimes veer more on the side, a lot of times veer more on the side of pastels and neutrals. So I toned it down with some corduroy pants from Uniqlo and of course some faux brogues that I'm pretty sure are from Payless. In the interest of combining quirky with subtle, I put on this dress that I thrifted. It's honestly so cute. It has like a little deer print on it. I paired it with this cardigan that has a cutout kind of print. I don't know what you would call it, but it's forks and spoons. Also, I wore these tights that are kind of old, so the print has kind of faded. But if you look closely, it's little people holding umbrellas. And of course, the same shoes, because why not? <laughs> Next, I wore this corduroy dress that I thrifted and also modified. I was thinking it would look great with a short cropped sweater, but alas, I do not have one. So I just folded one into itself and called it a day. Slapped on a red bow, bing, bing, boom. I don't know what movie this is from, but it, like, it's a vibe, you know? No facts, all vibes. <laughs> Side note, these are also basically outfits that I've worn to my office job. It's, it's kind of messing me up a little. Next is this outfit I kind of cobbled together because I wanted something that was in that brown, neutral, pastel look. This turtleneck is thrifted. The rest of the outfit, I'll see if I can link below. I thought about a flowy, lacy, longer skirt, but settled on the shorter tapestry fabric skirt because it suited the silhouette more. I struggled immensely with getting my hair in this beret, mostly because I haven't worn it enough to break it in, but also I just have a big head. Anyway, it's a collab with Esther Bunny, which is cool. I was going for a studious look uh, while still bringing a little interest with the texture on the bear skirt and the embroidery on the hat as well. Now I have seen some Sofia Coppola films, two of them to be exact, uh, The Virgin Suicides and Marie Antoinette, of course. Though The Beguiled is on my Netflix list, so I could see that tomorrow or like six months from now, who knows. Regardless, those are the films that basically inspired these looks. So first I have this dress from Forever 21. I bought it years ago for my brother's wedding and it held up surprisingly well, except the peach color has kind of faded. Regardless, I paired it with this monster of a sweater. This thing is so heavy, it's actually more like a blanket. I feel like I was specifically channeling the Virgin Suicides in their very simple 90s silhouette, somewhat covered up dresses. It's been a while since I've seen the film, but I remember a lot of flowy fabrics and white. That translates into this next outfit as well. I got this collared shirt, paired it with this kind of tiered mini skirt, some socks that are like ribbed, fishnet, they have a texture. This outfit is definitely lifted right out of the Virgin Suicides, specifically kind of splicing their school uniforms with their more everyday wear, I think. Next I used the pink turtleneck from earlier because I feel like her whole thing isn't just off-white outfits, even though my brain tells me it is. I got this hat. I love this hat. This hat struggled with me, but that's okay. It learned. I decided the lace skirt was better utilized in this kind of way, so I paired it with the outfit in an almost prairie 1800s way. I'd like to think so anyway. I got that giant sweater out again because who knows, um, I like layering. I don't really have an exact 1860s dress, so something inspired but also attainable will have to do in the moment. Tim Burton films I've probably seen the most of, but I don't own a lot of like gothy clothes. When I was like 19, I had a pair of overalls that were, they were like skinny jean overalls, but they were white and black striped. And I used those almost every Halloween to be Beetlejuice. 
So I wish I kept them, honestly. They were from Forever 21 though, so they, I think they fell apart. But, <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're working with what we have here. I'm kind of using inspiration from like Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Beetlejuice a little bit for like a touch of spooky. So I started off with this black turtleneck because we all have to work off of cliches sometimes in storytelling, okay? I paired it with this plaid skirt with flocky music notes that I bought secondhand on Japanese Mercari, the matching bow, and some Mary Janes, and I feel like you get the gist, probably. I wanted to go for like the weird pseudo-Victorian kid kind of look, but I don't have all the pieces. So I tried my best with this shirt. I've had it for over five years, but I feel like it might be for 21 or maybe Yes style. It's sheer, it's got a high neck, and the ruffly bits, actually a really nice basic. Black AA skirt, black tights, Mary Janes, this beret with beads on it that was a gift but is most likely from Amazon. It's hard to see, but the cardigan also has pearls, which is a nice tie-in. All right, I have to admit, this may or may not be an excuse to show off these Lucy and Yak overalls I got, but who cares? I love them, and they were a gift. And it feels very almost Halloween-y, but still playful, so I thought I'd throw it in the mix. Finally, we have two extra outfits that I thought spliced the aesthetics of, like, all of these directors, really. Black turtleneck and tights again, but this time I paired it with this wool plaid skirt. I definitely have this since high school. I couldn't tell you where it's from. A black beret and you've got a standard fall look. But what about if we mix some patterns into it? I decided this red plaid blazer wouldn't totally clash, mostly because of the color difference and the skirts plaid is a much bigger pattern. But who knows, maybe I look weird. In the moment, I thought it was cool and made me look like an 80s business lady with eccentric tastes. Obviously, this video is a love letter towards plaid. I wore this sleeveless white collared shirt with this dress from Uniqlo. It's a silhouette that kind of reminded me of Moonrise Kingdom. So I thought I'd pair it with this jacket that I have. It's a sailor collar. Don't worry, after a while, I did notice that the collar was messed up. But in the meantime, look at the embroidery and patches and stuff. I decided the black beret matched, but was boring. So I went back to a red beret and I liked the contrast a little bit more. I feel like the outfit encompasses a little bit of the spirit of various movies, so I thought I'd include it. So here we are, back again, me talking to you. Isn't it great? I guess in the meantime, uh, be the main character of your own story. Wear that beret, if you so choose. And thanks for watching. Like if you want, comment if you feel like it, subscribe if you are so inclined, and stay safe. Thanks.